This essay by <clears throat> Hans Jonas, uh, Technology and Responsibility, Reflections on the New Tasks of Ethics, is about our relationship with nature through technology. And of course, our relationship with nature is also, to some degree, our relationship with ourselves, since we are a part of nature. I think that that last part is important to keep in mind in this course, because if we are asking about the ethical questions that are raised by digital technology, we are focusing. And of course, the focus could, could have been different, but we are focusing on the, the effects of that technology on, on us rather than <clears throat> on the rest of nature. Uh, it is about our relationship with nature, this essay, and it presents a very daring thesis. And, and for what, whatever it's worth, I, I think you should keep in mind that it was written in 1973, um, a, a time when, of course, there were computers, there was digital technology, um, but long before, not long before, but well before uh, that digital technology had uh, entered into the consciousness of human beings in terms of something that was in an everyday sense transforming their lives. 1973 is an interesting point because we are in, in terms of the development of technology and our consciousness of the development of technology and of course his thesis our consciousness of the power the growing power of technology, we, we had passed a certain point. And that, the most dramatic <clears throat> example, or perhaps the place where you could set that point, is Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, this is the post war period, and this is the period of the Cold War. So perhaps one of the things that Jonas has in mind is uh, Manhattan Project, the uh, development of atomic weapons. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that the early 70s was really the beginning of a popular environmentalist movement. Uh, there was very, very little hint of anything like global warming. Uh, the evidence existed, but it was not a well-known thesis, and the effects of global warming certainly had not, in 1973, become in any way uh, known. But there was an environmentalist movement going on. Um, the first Earth Day and things like that. and um, So I, I think that those things are important to keep in mind, that we're at an, an interesting point in the development of technology in 1973, where people are becoming aware through the environmentalist movement of the kind of impacts that human beings can have in a global sense on nature. Uh, they are also acutely aware of the power of nuclear weapons, power of nuclear weapons to basically wipe out the human race, to end uh, not only human civilization, but perhaps human life on Earth. And they are aware of the power of computers. I mean, we, in, in 1968, Stanley Kubrick's uh, 2001 a Space Odyssey presented a um, very, very interesting and dramatic um, portrayal of an artificial intelligence. And certainly that had been part of science fiction for, for decades already, the idea of, a, you know, of, of artificial intelligences. Uh, but computers were not yet really part of the fabric of everyday life. Again, yes, of course, the digital computer was developed during World War II. Uh, Geniuses like Turing and John von Neumann, and people like that, had set out the architecture of the digital computer, and 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 there were at least mainframe computers at, at this time, and and some other things too. But but we're obviously interested in uh, you know the general thesis, and and it's fully applicable to digital technology, even though I don't think that Hans Jonas had specifically that technology in mind when he wrote it. So it is about our relationship with nature, and it is a daring thesis that that 
relationship has changed so radically that we must come up with uh, new ethical tools to deal with it or take a new ethical approach in some way to, to deal with that change situation. And we'll see how that thesis emerges uh, in the course of the essay. Um, but there's a very dramatic statement of the thesis in the beginning uh, where he says, basically, uh, after talking about the, you know, you're referring to previous ethics, and you may keep in mind things like Kantianism and utilitarianism, which he certainly has in mind, but he also has ethics of religious traditions in mind as well. Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, uh, Taoism. Um, that the situation has changed since those, the human condition has changed since those ethical approaches were, were developed. Um, that uh, they had inter what he calls interconnected tacit premises in common, that the human condition determined by the nature of man and the nature of things was given once for all, that the human good on that basis was readily determinable and that the range of human action and therefore responsibility was narrowly circumscribed. That is the key thesis, right? That is that those ethical philosophies, approaches, traditions were developed at a time when the range of human action and therefore human responsibility was narrowly circumscribed. That is a time when our technologies were at such a level that we could not hope to make any kind of uh, deep, or permanent uh, uh, impact on nature, that the effects of our actions were limited, um, that wh whatever we did, nature would be very little affected by, by what we did. And that, as we'll see, has to be seen uh, in terms of both time and space. Uh, that is, that... Um, the, the effects of our actions were limited in space in the sense that they could affect comparatively few people in comparatively few places. And also that they were limited in time in the sense that the power of our technology, the power of our acting uh, was limited to basically the present and the near future. Uh, and that this has changed, right? It will be the burden of my argument to show, he says, that these premises no longer hold and to reflect on the meaning of this fact for our moral condition. More specifically, it will be my contention that with certain developments of our powers, the nature of human action has changed. And again, this is the, as a result of technology which he says in the beginning of the first section here, the novel powers I have in mind are, of course, those of modern technology. Uh, not just technology, but modern technology. His point is that there is a qualitative difference between modern technology and pre-modern technology. And he, he, he presents this, or he illustrates this in a really wonderful way by quoting um, part of Sophocles' Antigone, Keep in mind, it was written in the 5th century BC, uh, in which it's, there is a wonderful description of the powers of human beings, of their, 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 their intelligence, their, 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 their difference in nature. Many of the wonders, but nothing more wondrous than man. And then this heroic uh, description of what human beings can do in, in terms not only of technology, but politics in terms of shaping their lives. But Jonas has presented this not just to remind us that human beings have always had technology, uh, but that the Antigone Chorus, this, this quote from Sophocles, um, shows the differences. Right? That is, as he says here on page 33, Yet there is a subdued and even anxious quality about this appraisal of the marvel that is man, and nobody can mistake it for a modest bragging. For all, with all his boundless resourcefulness, man is still small by the measure of the elements. Precisely this 
makes his sallies into them so daring and allows those elements to tolerate his forwardness. That is, uh, what it shows is that human beings in the relationship with nature at that time uh, were uh, really quite weak. Uh, as he says, all this holds because man's inroads into nature, as seen by himself, were essentially superficial. That is, weren't very deep, weren't very lasting. Didn't, human beings couldn't make much of an impact on nature. Um, whatever impacts they made were local and temporary. <clears throat> uh, so the, the, what Jonas is, is building up to is uh, a statement that this has changed, this, that, that we are no longer uh, the heroic but, but weak creatures that can make these uh, superficial uh, impacts on nature, but something has fundamentally changed that we do it.